Hi, and welcome back to uh, the Adam Shah channel on YouTube. I'm your host, Muhammad Azam. And uh, this is a continuation of the last screencast I did in which I showed you how you can communicate uh, your iOS application and uh, how you can actually make a communication between your iOS application and a .NET ASMX web service using a SOAP protocols. And as you can see, and as I told in the last screencast, that it was not really a pleasant experience doing that because you have to construct the SOAP body. Although there are classes that you can use to construct a SOAP body, it becomes just very ugly. And with all the new web API features and uh, you know WCF services, uh, it, it, it's kind of pain to go through this uh, basically this particular scenario. So uh, last time we left on, we, we got the response back, we have a successful response back from the XML web service through our iOS application and now we need to process that response. Okay, so how are we going to do it? So we are going to do it using uh, using Touch XML. Now Touch XML provides a very easy access to uh, easily you can you know parse through the XML document so I'm just gonna say see XML document and you can download and install touch XML using Cocoa Parts Cocoa Parts and uh, I will actually make a screencast showing you how you can use Cocoa Parts so doc equal to uh, see uh, XML document so what we are trying to do is we are constructing an XML document with with a with a string and we already have the string if you remember uh, where the string is part of the operation dot response string which represent the two customers uh, options in this case we are not going to provide any options and um, an error in this case is we're not going to provide any error so we uh, have constructed a doc in memory uh, which represents that particular the response that we have received so now we can say ns array and uh, nodes this and doc nodes for path and one of the things I like to show you is that if you simply say over here kind of like this that okay customer okay actually did we did I even show you what we receive actually we, we did see in the last example that we did get customers back right anyway so if I do like this and you'll be thinking that okay I will get the uh, from from my uh, from my response actually let me print out the response so you'll have a much better idea what I'm talking about um, I'm going to just print it out operation dot response string okay so just remember this code, this is using XPath to get the customer objects or to the customer elements out of the response string that we have. And this is a response strings. Okay, and you will be thinking that, okay, so now we can capture these, this one, the customer and this particular customer element and we'll get it into an array. Well, that is not going to work. And the reason it's not going to work is because of these namespaces. Uh, it's not going to find those customer objects unless you specify the namespace. Okay. Um, so we are going to construct a NS dictionary. Okay. And I'm just going to say a dictionary over here and NS dictionary and then dictionary with objects and keys and now over here we can simply provide what kind of namespace we are looking at so we know that over here is HTTP basically I'm going uh, I need to get this so I'm going over here and you can see that I cannot uh, I mean I can get this but the namespace for this one or the parent element is this one which is tempuri.org so we were going to provide that I'm just going to copy it from the already code that I have let me copy it out so you'll have a much better idea okay so okay what did I all right Uh, 
and now at this point we 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 will have that we we can get the uh the array and even when you're searching for expat you have to provide uh the namespace well you have to provide the temporary which is this one okay and now at, at this point you will get the two customer objects so what we can do is we can uh, check this out by saying nodes of count so here we go we get two and we, we have two objects one is Muhammad Azam and one is John Doe so that's good so we got the objects in the nodes uh, array and now what we need to do is we need to iterate through the array okay and uh, we need to either print it out or create a collection okay create an object or anything you want let's see if that will work so what we're doing is we are using the uh, might need one more so we are using the CXML we are iterating through the nodes we're not using the customer well, well we are actually using the customer object but uh, each node we are going to get the child count okay so just remember this once we get to this point these are all the child objects till till here till the last name so that's the only way you can access these things and then you are going to check that if it's a first name then you assign the customer dot first name if it's a last name then you will assign the last name and uh, and whenever you get another object when you are in node number two or something in the end uh, you're actually going to just add it into a collection and that's it so that's pretty much the parsing code that you need uh, so let me actually run it and uh, hopefully you will see that the first names are actually displayed um, so, uh, let me here we go so you can actually see Muhammad and John the first names of both the uh, customers are displayed correctly right so that's pretty much it so now you know how to communicate with a .NET XML web service which uses the SOAP protocols although I don't really think that I mean it it's, uh, you will be using this I mean if you're building a greenfield application uh, and on the dotnet side use a WCF service or use a web API controllers which makes it very very easy to communicate between the iOS application and the WCF application and instead of also instead of returning XML as a response you should always try to uh, return JSON as a response it's much easier to handle and much more natural to handle than the XML um, th that's pretty much it and I hope you like this video and you got a little bit of things out of this video how to access uh, or how to invoke a dotnet XML web service just keep in mind and let's see yeah keep in mind that uh, pay special attention to the uh, to basically the the type of the request that you need to send the type of the headers that you need to send the type of the body that you need to send okay uh, thank you very much and uh, have a good day